Hi guys, in this video I just thought I would show you around uh, my work area I have at home. It's 550 square feet of workspace which is down here. Uh, I also have another 300 square feet which is upstairs. Those of you that are new to my channel, I'm Barry. Um, I do property renovations, property maintenance and they also have a small fencing business. So this is an area that I use a lot and I, I spend a lot of my time here. And I'll show you how we've got it set up. Right, I'll get behind the camera, flip it around and we can go give you a, a tour. Right, so here's pretty much my workspace here. All the way back here. I tend, tend to try and keep this area clear, which I'll explain later. This is just looking out on the front. So we've pretty much got a double garage door here, which is automated. Here's my van, so I can reverse this in at any time, load the van, and it's just handy. You know. uh, small storage area out here. This is all rough sawn pressure treated timber for fencing. It doesn't always stay there, I've got a bit around the side as well. I've got a metal rack around the back, ladder rack around the back, so that's effectively the outside. So I'll do a separate video on my van, how I've got it loaded out, but most of my power tools and everything are in there. So that just gives you a brief overview of how I work. So we'll get into the, the actual workspace now and we'll, we'll give you a tour. Right, so this is my workspace. Uh, I'll just say before I begin, um, I'm not a, you know, a manufacturer as such. So I'm not, a, I'm not a joiner that comes in here and builds, you know, units or, you know, bespoke pieces of furniture or anything like that. You know, my business is very much uh, property maintenance property renovations and you know a lot of fencing work so I'll say this whole side is pretty much a storage area uh, but I will, I'll go into this in detail uh, later on but it's primarily an extension of my van without keeping things in my van if you know what I mean <laughs> it'll become apparent later on this is the metal fabrication area um, this is a sort of assembly area you know if I'm, I'm building any timber gates or anything like that I will use this workbench this is the, the floor space that I tend to try and keep clear, which is not always easy. This this would be my work area. I would set up my miter saw, uh, trestles, things like that. So we'll get into this now. I'll, I'll just take you right round uh, as briefly as I can, just to show you the type of things that I, I carry in here uh, and what I do. Uh, so first things first here is a gate jig. I build a lot of gates, standardized gates, uh, wooden gates. I'll link to a picture here. Uh, that's a typical type of gate that I would do, but if you build a jig, you know it, it makes the, you know, the construction process a lot faster, a lot more efficient. So I have this gate here, uh, heater, which is imper <laughs> really important here because it's absolutely freezing. There's no heating uh, within this workspace, so that's the only heating I've got, uh, which is a propane heater. I've got a floor-mounted drill press here which again is usually mainly used with the, the fabrication side of things. So it's just a Clark uh, floor mounted drill press. It's not bolted to the floor. I find it easier just dragging it out as I need it uh, for longer items, but small items I can just drill, drill in there. This is just a, a portable sort of little bench that I can put things on top, uh, components. It's just plastic, so I can just drag it about quite easily. In behind there is a petrol breaker for I use for fencing. It's just kept beside the door, so it's easy, easily loaded into my van. Okay, so we've got a battery charging station here. So most nights before I go out to a job, I'll charge, you know, as many batteries as I can. Chuck them in my van where I've got the, the specialist, you know, the mount, the mounts for the batteries. I can hold probably about 10 batteries at any one time in my van. One thing I'll mention, I've got a 32 amp supply in here. Uh, as I'll come on to shortly, I do a lot of welding work in here, so it's, it's good to have a 32 amp uh, 240 volt supply for the welding machines. Ladder clamps by Rhino. Uh, I've got Rhino roof racks on my van. So I can stick, anytime I need ladders, stick the ladders on the top and just clamp them down quickly with those clamps. Uh, you know, it saves you using the, the ratchet straps. Just miscellaneous stuff held on magnets here. Uh, a lot of tapes scattered about the workshop because I'm always mislaying tapes. So that's that. I've got a blower here for blowing any dust, you know, cleaning the the miter saws, see the sawdust on there, but I normally give them a blow down before I uh, store them. Same with the floor, you can blow it as opposed to sweeping it. Uh, underneath the bench here, we've got the Makita cordless track saw, which is excellent. Uh, under here, we've got the 12 inch miter saw from DeWalt. Uh, this is the corded version uh, because it's only used in here. I never, I never really take that out on site, it's just too heavy. And, you know, to, to carry about. Uh, most of the tools I use inside, if not all, are cordless. I tend to use cordless, cordless tools. Uh, this is a seven and a half inch miter saw, which is cordless. 
So I'll use that with the 6 or 9 amp hour batteries. Uh, it's ideal for especially fencing work. Uh, I use the, the little brackets in the both miter saws, which I'll clip onto the, the dual miter stands. Or trestles, you know, so quick release stands, you just clip them on top. And your miter saws ready to go. Yeah, this is just tiling equipment. So we've got a manual tile cutter there, a uh, motorised tile cutter there. Uh, I actually need to rearrange this, but that's where it is at the moment. Just an old stereo there. Uh, the radio doesn't actually work on there, so I've got a Mikito, Mikita cordless radio, which is good. Uh, but I, I tend to try and keep this as my good radio. I, I normally use a DeWalt radio if I'm out on site. This is a better radio, but I like to keep it good and just keep it in here. So that's pretty much that side. It's generally just a workbench, you know, uh, with a bit of storage underneath. Uh, I really need to close this off. Uh, I really need to do that with a lot of this workspace, to be honest. Even all this racking, I get a bit fed up with all the dust and everything that's created in here and ends up, you know, in amongst everything. So I really need to get all this closed off somehow. Uh, as I said, this is my welding area. If I'm doing welding or grinding, I normally just throw sheets right over the top of this, which helps. Yeah, but it's not ideal. So that's that area there. So that brings us on to this area now, which is, I'll just walk back, this is a metal fabrication area. Um, my background, I'm actually a time-served multi-coded welder, which means a welder, if anybody knows anything about welding, uh, welds pipelines for offshore, the oil and gas industry. It's quite a high standard of welding, it's the, you know, where all your welds are x-rayed and, and things like that, without boring you to tears. Um, but that, that is my background, that in engineering. So it's only natural, I've got a lot of welding stuff. It's just an extension of me, really. But I haven't really shown this on this channel, but I do do fabrication, which I'll go through briefly. I'll probably do a separate video on all this sort of stuff here, because it's quite complex, some of the things uh, to go through in one video. But uh, here I've got a tool wall, which is generally geared towards fabrication. So here, there's just like center punches, scribes, uh, you know, files, metal rules, pretty much everything's to hand. So if I'm doing anything on here, I can just grab it, use it, and then try to put it back, which I'm not very good at. <laughs> Generally, this area will end up in just one big mass of tools over there. I need to really improve on using things and putting them back in their place. Small MIG welder, this is the, I'll just say, Kempe is my preferred uh, make of welding equipment. That there, that there. But the reason I stick to Kempe is in the oil industry, that, that was the machines of choice or the make of choice in the oil industry. Um, so I'm, I'm used to using them, they're really good. So Kempe and Fronius is probably the, the two makes you would make here in the UK, or you using here in the UK. I do have a cheaper MIG welder there, which is SIP, a SIP 170, which is, is good. I'm not a huge fan of MIG welding, it's just point and squirt type stuff, so for a... <laughs> Time serve welder, it's not it's not the process of choice. The process of choice is always TIG for me. Yeah, so it's a Kempe Minarc MIG 200, which takes us on to, uh, it's a bit of a gimmick, screen saver on my uh, <laughs> Kempe TIG welder. Let's move that. So this is just a water-cooled uh, AC, DC TIG welding plant. This is the Master TIG 235, which is single phase. 240 volt, but it's it's all I need uh, in here. Uh, these these machines are absolutely brilliant. Uh, again, I'll probably do a separate video on all the, the, the features of this, but it's AC, DC, bottom line, which means you can weld aluminium, steel, stainless, duplex, titanium, you know, any type of material you care to mention. It's just a, a great all-rounder. So that's my, my TIG welding setup. This also doubles up as an MMA machine, which is stick welding. So you can use this for stick welding as well. So we've got the stick, TIG, MIG, and MIG. So that's my welding setup. Uh, this is my chop saw. So for cutting steel, this is my preferred uh, you know, tool of choice. This has got the TCT blade on it. So what that means, it's a cold cut chop saw. So when you cut steel with this particular saw, it creates zero sparks, you know, zero heat, well, not zero, minimal heat, should I say. So you can cut steel with that, uh, you know, and the, and the metal doesn't get hot. 
and there's no sparks whatsoever, which is ideal in an enclosed space like this. So, you know, working in amongst all this stuff here with sparks lying around is not ideal. So, hence the reason I, I choose particular tools. Probably another bit of equipment is the mag drill. This is a bore master mag drill, which we use for boring large diameter holes in steel. Again, I might do another video on that for anybody that's interested, just to show you what you use it for and how you, you know, how it works. Uh, you might see that there, that's composite boards for gates. Uh, so, pretty much you fabricate the metal frame of the gates, whether it be driveway gates or you know, housing gates and, and use the composite boards uh, as opposed to the wooden boards. Okay, so above that area there, I have got a, a bit of a dodgy <laughs> roof-mounted storage rack, which is not probably not the safest in the world. It's just made out of old fencing timber, screwed directly into the, the joist running across there. Uh, sorry, I've got an LED light here, which I need to I'm going to change these out for LEDs at some point. Anyway, uh, storage rack. It's pretty much just for long lengths of steel. Uh, you know, it's light wall tubing, so it's, there's no weight to that at all. Uh, store a lot of copper pipe up there. Just longer items. Uh, there's my Stabila uh, pole that I use my laser level. Just some offcuts of wood. Things like that. More plumbing pipe up there. That's your waste pipe. Um, it's generally just keeps it up off the ground. Gives us more space down here. Uh, I've got more steel here, which is that's more for an upcoming job. It's I just take it in to stop it rusting. This is a radius piece of forty mil box section. I have to buy that in. I don't have the capabilities to to bend that, so I buy that in ready bent. So it's a three meter length. In case anybody's wondering. Anyway, enough of that, enough of the fabrication. Uh, as I said, I'll probably do another video on that on its own. So that now brings us down to this sort of storage type area, which we'll go through now. Okay, so this is the storage area, really. Just try and give you a better view. So pretty much the way I work, I think I've explained this in other videos, is um, I don't particularly load my van, or I don't keep my van very much, you know, full to the brim, you know, with tools and stuff. So what I tend to use, I use a lot of these DeWalt DS, this is the DS400, DS300, the smaller boxes, and obviously all my Vito Pro Pack bags. Uh, you can see them all dotted along there, and they're all set out for specific trades. So you can see them all there. Um, so I try to keep everything in sections. Um, so, well, briefly, that's roughly fabrication, a little bit of fencing, a bit of joinery work, you know, equipment up there. Router, this is all fencing equipment. This is electrical, this is plumbing and some maintenance stuff there. And this is pretty much plastering, uh, painting and decorating. Uh, that type of thing. All my hand tools and everything are all sorted out ahead of time, basically. So I can grab any one of these bags and they're all set up for specific trades. I don't need to rake about for specific tools, you know, in a toolbox to do specific jobs. Um, if that doesn't make any sense to you guys, if you haven't watched my videos before, I'll put a link there to my Vito Pro Pack playlist. And pretty much in that, within that playlist, there's videos on how I set up all these bags and all the different hand tools that I use in those bags. Yeah, it's just the most efficient way that I, I've found it working. Just if you're wondering why this is all lined up like this, that's hopefully that's explained it. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, so here, pretty much fabrication sort of stuff. A couple of bench grinders there, which I take out and use as I need. I don't like them bolted, you know, anywhere uh, specifically. Uh, some ironmongery stuff, uh, the mag drills explained. Um, just pretty much fabrication, so it's a lot of mag drills, yeah, the drill bits, uh, cobalt drills, stuff like that. A lot of paints for a lot of the metal work that I'm doing, so it's primers and paints, uh, greases, all that type of thing. Uh, in this corner, sorry I should have mentioned this before, but this is where my miter saw stand is. So a lot of the time, um, when I'm doing bigger sort of jobs in here, especially fencing related anyway, I'll, I'll take the, 
the miter saw stand out, set it up in the middle of the shop and do all the cuts and whatever I need. Um, here are the trestles I use. Uh, these are just sacrificial pieces of wood, 4x2 timber on top of the trestles. They come off with two screws if I need to and then I can just clip on the, the miter saws. They just clip directly onto these trestles uh, and also obviously on the miter stand. Uh, this is just my track saw track for the Makita track saw. So all that stuff's just tucked away in that area. I also have a bit of ply there which is about 4 foot by 2 foot wide. Um, it just serves as a, a portable workbench. So I can set these two trestles up, take this bit of plywood out, it's got a handle on it, just chuck it on top of the trestles, and then all of a sudden you've got a, a portable workbench on site. So that's pretty much that area. Up here is just tool belts, overalls, floor cutter. Uh, these are just homemade uh, stands for you know standing doors up when you're putting hinges in. Stuff like that. Uh, wood glues, uh, P38, that's cat alloy, which I use a lot for wood repairs, wood rot repairs. We've got fence panel clips, so any fence and panel jobs that I'm doing, these are all the different clips that I need are in there. Loads of different T hinges for gates. A few tins of Cupronol duck spark, which I use for preserving uh, certain types of fences that I'm doing. Clear preserver, it's a small TP5 maintenance grab bag. Just sits in there. It's normally in the van to be honest, but I've just put it in here just now. All these specific boxes. This is a fencing box. This is all my routing stuff here. So I've got my big router, big trend router, my little trim router, and all my bits. Two chainsaws, another electric breaker, a couple of nail guns, nail gun nails. Again, this is all pretty much fencing orientated. All the different screws. A lot of flap discs, I use a lot of those in fencing. Uh, sprays for marking out where fence posts go in the ground. One of these DeWalt uh, cases here just for all my, if I'm fixing posts onto walls, I'll just take this whole thing. It's got all the drills, all the bolts, the washers, everything all preset, you know, so I don't need to think about it, just grab it and take it. Um, up on the top there, these are water containers. I tend to fill these all up, take them in the van and take them with me when I need to. Um, here, this is electrical. So my Tech LC there, which is all set up for electrical. As I said, if you look at my, my Vito playlist, you'll see how I've set this up. All the different cables, sockets, dry lining boxes, switches, all that type of stuff. Uh, I've got another Vito, uh, another dual case there with all the different connectors. Yeah, it's Wago connectors that I use predominantly. I won't take that out, but you, you'll see what I mean. That's electrical. Uh, this is plumbing. This is a bit of plumbing here as well. So I tend to stock a lot of uh, toilet uh, uh, flush valves and I also stock fill valves. So if you see up there, we've got bottom entry fill valves there, uh, side entry float valves here. Carry them in both half inch and three eighths, because you do get two different sizes. Uh, more flush valves there. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So the reason I do this, the reason that I hold a stock of certain items is, is basically just to, you know, save going to the hardware stores or you know, the, the big outlets or ordering online, it's just a time saver really. If I've got up and coming jobs, I always know I've got a certain amount of stock in here that I can take without ordering things. I mean, I, I live in quite a rural location, so it's not as if I'm in a, a city where I can just, you know, nip to the hardware store or whatever, so I need to be a bit more organized. So that's why I carry all this stuff. So I hope that gives you an overview. I don't know if I've said, but I've, got, I've obviously got rental properties as well. Um, so I do tend to carry, especially plumbing stuff or certain electrical items as well. If anything goes wrong in the property, I'm always on hand. There's an on hand, you know, landlord, if you like, I can just go in and, and fix it straight away. Keep the tenants happy. Right, so that's pretty much an overview of all that. So we've got all our storage stuff there, fabrication area. 
just a general workbench area there. Um, it's like a storage floor area here. Um, we've also got racking over here, which is some of the bigger items. Uh, obviously, that's my postal auger. This is a head trimmer. All my fuels are down this end of the shop, obviously. <laughs> I'm down here and I'm welding up there. <laughs> There's no chance of it going on fire. Uh, so, yeah, this is pretty much just a miscellaneous load of stuff. Um, socket sets, battery chargers, stuff like that. Uh, wet vac and also a carpet cleaner, which we do use in rental properties. And lastly, hopefully we've seen all around here. So lastly, if we can have a look up here, you'll see this ladder. So I've actually got a floor space right above this whole area, which actually goes back further than this door. You know, into here. Um, and this floor space here comes all the way back right through this door and right above me, all the way along. So it's actually a lot longer than this, but it's a bit narrower. Yeah, so this is this area up here. So it's just a pull down ladder. I'll just Yeah, so that's a ladder there. That takes us up into that space there. Um, I'm actually not going to take it up there, it's an absolute mess. But up there I tend to store like old tiles, paints, some tools that I don't use, things like that. It's just a, a dumping ground really. So that's it. That is a handy space. Alright guys, well thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up as always. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe by clicking there and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.